Uh, so these tape experiments these, that we did last week and you'll be doing in lab this week, kind of simple things to play around with just to get an idea of, of charging, discharging, polarization, that sort of thing. But they do raise some interesting questions that you should keep in mind as we're going through this chapter. The first one we've already talked about, which is why does uh, why does a charged object attract neutral matter? So we talked about that last time. It's essentially, if we have this positive charge here that is creating a dipole moment, then we can think about the dipole itself, this induced dipole. And let me now draw it in this schematic form that we're going to use. Here's our positive charge. Here's the induced dipole, which is now negative on one end and positive on the other. Well, the dipole itself is going to create an electric field at the location of the original charge. So the electric field due to the dipole, if we're closer to the negative end, is going to be pointing that way. And then the field acting on a positive charge is going to produce a force in this direction, the same direction as the electric field. So it's an attractive force. If we had a negative charge brought near a neutral molecule, it would polarize the opposite way, right? Because the negative charge would tend to repel the electron cloud in the molecule. We get an electric field due to the dipole now that's pointing in this direction. But because we're saying F is equal to Q times E and Q is now negative, the force is going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so we get an attraction. And then just from Newton's third law, if you have the force due to the dipole on the charge being pointing in that direction, then the force on the charge due to the dipole would have to be equal in magnitude and in the opposite direction, right? So we get an attraction. No matter what case we have, the polarization always occurs such that we get an attraction. We just can't get a repulsion between uh, neutral matter and a charged object, okay? So that was taken care of. Other things that we can think about. Um, what other questions might this raise? We were able to pull it off a piece of tape, and let's do it real quick. So we pulled it off a surface, and we saw electrical interactions. So, what other questions come to mind here that we might be interested in? Does anything happen to the surface? Okay, so surface interactions. Surface interactions might be important because it looks like one surface is being in, is in contact with another, right? And if I pull one tape off another, or if I don't pull it off this entire desk at all, but see, clearly there's a sticky side, right? That's we're pulling off one sticky side off another, and somehow this this leads to uh, a charge, right? So maybe the surface interactions, something's going on with the surface here. And more generally, maybe contact interactions. And maybe thinking about those things might be important for figuring out why does the tape charge up? What, what's the mechanism behind or why does the tape get a charge? And just generally speaking, why, why, why can we have a neutral object and then some contact interaction occurs and suddenly it has a, a net charge on it? Any guesses? Just what might be happening at, at the surface? Okay, there's friction. What, is, what would that have to do? Or what, what? We, we end up with what? We end up with a tape that has what? A net charge, which means there's what? Okay, there's a disbalance of electrons relative to protons, right? We either have 
too few electrons, meaning we have an excess positive charge, or too many electrons, which means we have an excess negative charge. How might that happen? Okay, so one possibility is you left electrons behind, or maybe you pulled electrons off of another surface, right? Uh, is this possible? Could we pull protons out of the nucleus of an atom and have more protons? I see people shaking their heads. That seems really unlikely, right? I mean, the protons are really bound very strongly to the, the nucleus. You'd need uh, a nuclear interaction, right, or a strong force interaction to pull protons out of the nucleus, and I don't think that's happening with these, with these tapes. So it's probably something having to do with the electrons. It might be a little bit more complicated than that, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, what other things could we think about? Any other? Okay, how much charge is there? Yeah. Do you mean how much or what's the sign? Or, or what's the sign? Okay, so what's the sign? And the sign, we talked a little bit last time, I couldn't quite get it to work, but if you had, if you knew from experiment some object that charged a particular way, say positive, then how would you test that something else has the same charge? You look for repulsion, right? You look for repulsion. That's the key idea. Attraction is not necessarily conclusive because you can have attraction between uh, positive and, and neutral or charged and neutral objects, okay? But how much charge is another, more quantifying this, how much charge is another question. And this is something you'll be doing in lab, trying to come up with a way to at least get an order of magnitude estimate for how much charge there is. Um, okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Those are kind of the big ones, and so maybe we'll go with those for now. Yes? Static electricity. So what we are actually dealing with now is what's, commonly termed static electricity, okay? Uh, oops, lost my microphone. Static electricity is a term that you hear kind of a lot in sort of everyday parlance, everyday life. When a, when a physicist says static electricity or, or static electric interactions, he just means the type of electric interactions we've been dealing with so far, meaning charges that are stationary, charges that aren't moving. So pretty much everything we've been talking about is really a, a uh, form of static electricity in some sense, okay? As opposed to uh, electric, uh, the dynamics of electric interactions when charges are actually moving uh, in circuits, for example, or when we're dealing with magnetic interactions, we see, we'll see, later see that those are due to moving charges. So when you hear static electricity, it's really nothing different than what we've been talking about so far. Okay, uh, Okay. other questions? That's a good question. <laughs> 